Welcome today as we gather for worship. This is our fourth and final Advent worship service, which means Christmas is just around the corner. I want to give you one announcement about our Christmas worship service. We will gather for Christmas worship online. The service will be posted by noon on the 24th, so you can still join us uh, virtually. As we begin today, we do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Emmanuel, our King and Lord, the anointed for the nations and their Savior, come and save us, O Lord our God. O Emmanuel, our King and our Lord, the anointed for the nations and their Savior, come and save us, O Lord our God. O Emmanuel, our King and our Lord, the anointed for the nations and their Savior, come and save us, O Lord our God. Faithful God, you always keep your promises and you said that you would never leave us or forsake us. As we near the destination in our Advent journey and light these candles, prepare our hearts to be carriers of your hope, your peace, your love, and your joy. Amen. Come, O oh come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the sun of If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come with your abundant grace and might. Free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. Our sermon reading from this, even, uh, this morning is from Isaiah, chapter 35, beginning in verse 1. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For the waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become wheat, reeds, and rushes. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, we join our voices together as we profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lo, how a rose air blooming from tender stem has sprung of Jesse's lineage coming as prophets long have sung. It came a flower bright amid the cold of winter when spin was the night Isaiah twas foretold it the rose I have in mind with Mary we behold it the virgin mother kind to show God's love alive. She bore to us a Savior when Aspen was the night. This flower whose fragrance
today we are continuing our sermon series. We've been looking at Handel's Messiah and some of the biblical passages that uh, that really lie behind it and, and, and the words uh, may, are made up with these passages. So today we turn to the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11, picking up in verse 2, which says this. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. That's our reading for today. Let's begin with a prayer. We pray. Merciful and gracious God, as we draw near to the celebration of Christmas, I pray that you'd open this passage to us. And the question here that's at the center, the question that, that John asks of the disciples, uh, through the disciples of Jesus, are you the coming one? Lord, use me to proclaim this in the name of Jesus and to his glory. Amen. I recently came across an article that listed 50 fun Christmas trivia questions. And since Christmas is so close, I figured what better time to, to use this and share it with you than today. So hopefully you're ready for some of these questions. The first one is this. Visions of which food danced in children's heads as they slept in the poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas? Hopefully you're answering sugar plums. Next question. The movie Miracle on 34th Street is based on a real-life department store. What is it? The department store is Macy's. Macy's. How about this one? What color Christmas does Elvis have? And if you've ever heard the Christmas song, you know it is a blue Christmas that Elvis has. Or how about this one? In the classic Christmas show, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Grinch was described with three words. What are the words? And hopefully you're saying stink, stank, and stunk. Those are the three words. For anyone who loves literature, how about this one? In Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, what was the first name of Scrooge? And his first name was Ebenezer. If you're an eggnog drinker, here's a question for you. Which country did eggnog come from? And it originated in, in England. So on Christmas Eve, one of the traditions is related to this next question. Uh, and it's the, the movie, A Christmas Story. So what is Ralphie's little brother's name in the movie, A Christmas Story. And his name is Randy. No matter how many times you will watch it on Christmas Eve, it will always be Randy. Hey, last one here. How many gifts in total were given in the 12 days of Christmas song? If you add them all up, how many gifts is that? Um, you can take my word for it, it's 364. But you can go and do the math if you would like. All of these questions had me thinking about the question John the Baptist asked Jesus. Now John had been imprisoned by Herod Antipas, who was the ruler in the area where John was proclaiming. And, and he put John in prison because he was angered by John's message. While in prison, John heard what Jesus was doing and was confused by what he was hearing and the actions of, of Jesus. And so because of this, John sent some of his followers to Jesus with a question. John's question for Jesus was this. Are you the coming one? Are you the coming one? We see that question in verse 3 when he says, Are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? Now, Jesus answered John's question in typical Jesus fashion. Today, what we're going to do is look at how 
Jesus answered this question and see why this answer is significant for us today. So I want you to first notice that Jesus answered John's question by telling him to listen to what people are saying. While watching a live online video last week, I noticed that the chat window was filled with the other viewers' comments, and I could see them scrolling past. And I soon became more interested in reading the chat comments than in the video itself. I was curious to know what other people were saying. While reading those comments, I suddenly realized I do the same thing when I shop online too. I mean, the first thing I do as I'm shopping online is I go to read the other customer reviews. I want to know what people who bought this very item had to say about it and whether or not they would buy it again. It struck me that we tend to be pretty concerned with what other people say. Now, if you don't believe me, just take a moment after you watch our service today and, and spend a few moments on social media, and you'll see just how concerned we are with what other people are saying. When John's followers reach Jesus, they ask him if he was the one to come. Right, Jesus could have given a long descriptive answer, but instead he gave this very Jesus-like answer. Jesus said, go and tell John what you hear. Notice that Jesus doesn't try to defend or explain himself. Instead, he says, what do you hear others saying about me? Here's a question I want you to think about today. How did you hear about Jesus? Right? How did you first hear? Most followers of Jesus heard about him from a family member or a friend. The journey to faith starts when God works through the words and the witness of ordinary people. The answer to John's question comes as we listen to what others are saying about Jesus. Jesus answered John's question by telling him to listen to what people are saying. I want you also to notice that Jesus answered John's question by telling him to see what things are happening. See the things that are happening. One of the interesting things about Christmas is it's a time when we have all sorts of Christmas specials and many of them are, are classic, classic Christmas specials. So I, I want you to think about if you have a favorite one. A Charlie Brown Christmas is certainly a favorite. And so too is Frosty the Snowman and Santa Claus is coming to town. But one of my all-time favorites is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. This one I especially like. I don't know if you know it or not, but Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is the longest running Christmas special in history. It first aired December 6th, 1964, and has been on television every year since. Now, today as we watch it, the animation may look pretty, pretty dated to us, but it was considered groundbreaking at the time. Right, for me, it doesn't feel like Christmas unless I've seen Rudolph's red nose glow at least once on that show. Seeing something with our own eyes can be powerful and can make an impression on us. Have you ever seen the Northern Lights? If so, you'll never forget the colorful glow. The other day I saw a bad car accident, which stuck in my mind long after I had passed by. The point is this, there's power in seeing. Jesus knew the power of seeing when he instructed John's followers to tell John what they had seen. I want you to hear again from verses 4 and 5 
what Jesus has to say. And Jesus answered, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news. Preach to them. You know, as I think back to John's original question, it's interesting that it's really a question about identity. Essentially, John was asking Jesus, who are you? And Jesus could have answered John's question by saying, I am the one to come. Instead, he said, look at the things that are happening. The reason why he answered this way is because these signs announced and proclaimed who Jesus was and is. There was nothing more to say. John's question for Jesus is a great one for us as we consider and prepare for Christmas. The question of Jesus' identity is at the heart of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Christmas is the celebration of the fact that Jesus is the coming one who brings healing and restoration to the world and who calls us to new life. May the Lord bless and keep you as you prepare to celebrate the birth of the one who is to come. Let's pray. Gracious God, we do thank you for Jesus Christ, the coming one, He's revealed in the signs, the miracles that happen. When we hear and see those things that he has done, strengthen us in this as we prepare to celebrate Christmas this year. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you join me as we pray for God's people in her church? God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. 
Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighboring churches and ministries. Inspire the faith of their people. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love and service to our community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations, that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food plantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, pour out your mercy to all who cry out to you. We give thanks for answers to prayer and to those whose needs have been met, especially Jack Simon's insurance has approved his medications. For the healing of Linda Arsifle, that this nodule in Sarah St uh, Sandra Stead's lung has remained stable. Lord, continue to bless her with good health and good test results. Lord, for those who have recovered, who are recovering from COVID-19, including our preschool director, Raymond Dennis, for Diana Vargas, our church secretary, and for John and Suzanne. Surround everyone in need of healing, in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence, especially Linda Tremaine, as she recovers from a fall at home. For Sherry Mink, as she recovers from surgery and full healing for her back. For Mary Kay, who has returned to the hospital. For Kristen Morundi, as she recovers from a recent knee surgery. For Nathan and his parents, Heather and Greg, as they search for the correct medications or to keep his seizures under control. Lord, for those who have been diagnosed who are currently battling COVID-19, including Stephanie, who is in the hospital in the last stages of this disease, give her comfort and assurance to protect her children. Lord, for Joe and Christine, for Vic, for Cecilia, Sheila Morales' daughter, and for Sheila herself, Lord, that you would protect and keep her safe, and for Hazel Steinmetz. Lord, for all of those that we name out loud, and those that we name in our hearts, we pray for your continued healing and mercy. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of the margins and God of our community, we lift into your care those this holiday season that are without respite, that are on the front lines, including nurses, EMTs, doctors, hospital and long-term care staff, law enforcement officers, Lord, customer service employees, that you would be with them, comfort them, keep them safe in this season and bring them joy. For those in our military serving at home and abroad, many away from families as we prepare for our Christmases here, that you would comfort them as well, keep them safe and bring them home safely. For those in our community that are traveling for the holidays and those abroad that are traveling to visit family or simply to winter here with us, that you would provide safe travels, Lord, and more importantly, safety from illness. For our missionaries abroad and locally, that you would continue to bless their ministries, that they would be fruitful, the Lord, especially in this unique season. And Lord, for us at home, that you would create in us a missionary zeal that would burn in our hearts, that we may see where you 
would have us serve our community to proclaim your good news. Lord, we know that you are in our community working through and through. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebears. We give thanks for the ministry of Katerina von Bora Luther and other ancestors who organized, planned, dreamed, encouraged, and reached out as they serve you. We give thanks for the bold leadership of women leaders in our own time. Inspire others with their steadfast witness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit strengthen and keep you in the true faith until life eternal. Go in God's peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.